Here we are in the, uh, the Serralves Park, surrounded by the work of the Danish Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson. We're going to see a, a body of, of work here that have been uh, commissioned last year uh, to the artist by the Serralves Museum as part of an ongoing program of commissioning artists to produce works for the, uh, for the Serralves Park. Just to give you a bit of context around Olafur Eliasson, he is an artist in his uh, uh, early 50s. Uh, he's someone who over the last uh, 25 years has developed a body of work um, centered on the relationship between art, of course, science, technology, and mathematics. Another part of his work is his interest in the way audience, the visitors uh, experience the work and at times are integral to the work and participate in, in the work. When you look at his work, you can trace his work from an historical tradition that I say would start in the uh, early 20th century when artists belonging to the Bauhaus or to the Russian avant-garde from the 1930s were very interested in this uh, um, uh, connection, passage, between, uh, between different disciplines and specifically between you know, art and science and also architecture. And we'll see that one of the pieces here is, is also belong both to the field of art and to the field of architecture. The body of work that he has done for Serralves somehow rotate around the, the idea of, of water. Water and uh, I would say movement of water and movement on water, some of them inspired by, uh, by mathematics. So let's start with, um, um, with these works here behind me. Another aspect that I would also want to point out as we're talking about these works is the two first group of work we are going to talk about are about circulation on water, travel. And it's almost a paradox that we are talking about that right now, as the world cannot travel anymore on water or in air or in the air or on the ground. That these work that are all involved or inspired by the notion of exchange, movement and travel are uh, uh, discussed today when everything stands still. So the three works that we have uh, uh, behind me are uh, all inspired by a mathematical equation that, if memory serves, was identified in the 17th 18th century by an, uh, an Italian mathematician, Guido Grandi, I believe, but that's to be verified. And uh, the, the, they are called, this, this, uh, uh, this equation was called the Clelia, Clelia sphere. And I'm not a mathematician, so I'm not sure I truly understand it, but what I know about it is that this equation was designed to calculate how to go how to go from one point to another on a sphere or to go from one pole to the other pole on a sphere and this sphere being the earth so it's very likely that this equation was designed to figure out how to navigate from one point, from point a to point B. And when you look at the, uh, the, the formalization of this equation, you have a series of curves that follow different kind of parameters that a particle on this sphere 
would I have to respond to to go to point A to point B. Thus the different shapes that these curves are from quite simple to moderately complicated to extremely complicated. So what the artist Olafur Eliasson has done is that he has taken these uh, um, formalization of the equation, turned them into a three-dimensional model with a computer, uh, and then realize this three-dimensional sculpture. He painted black and white, which is a formalist decision in order to, to facilitate to his the perception of the sculpture. And also part of Olafur Eliasson's work is uh, exercise in perception, that, that that detail that we'll find actually in other works comes back quite often. They are purely mathematical, but they are also... Um, you can approach this work from two different angles. The mathematical angle and what I try to explain you with my, my very uh, uh, truncated knowledge of mathematics. Or you can also look at them as belonging to a very well-known tradition of purely abstract sculpture. Uh, that would start with... Uh, um, I was talking about the Russian avant-garde, but you can look at an artist like Laszlo Moly Nudge from the mid-20th century, and you would find the root of his sculpture. What I also find extraordinary with the sculpture is um, that they are, for me, an open, an open work, an open structure. First, they, uh, the perception of it is um, uh, almost an illusion, because this sculpture appear to be dancing on the floor, magically, almost suspended on the floor. They are actually, in order to produce them, the artist had to design quite a sophisticated uh, um, system of balance so that the sculpture wouldn't fall. And you have also underground, and it's maybe revealing the recipe of the artist a little too much, but actually quite a powerful and deep foundation, so that the sculpture would appear to be just uh, 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 dancing on one point on the floor. And that also is a, a question of modernist sculpture. How do you avoid uh, uh, the pedestal? How do you avo avoid the trick that makes the sculpture balance? When I look at them, uh, for me, I always think Look at art when art starts to interact with other disciplines. So with Olafur, we think of mathematics, we think of architecture, science. But for me, I cannot not think of image of the early 20th century dancer, Louis Fuller, who was dan dancing and having loops around her. Uh, and there was these marvelous photos of Louis Fuller dancing. And somehow, they look exactly like this tree sculpture by Olafur Eliasson. But also, when you will come to the garden to experience the sculpture, pay attention to the shadows. Because, you know, I truly believe that in the works of art, nothing is left up to chance. And as the sun of the, 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 the garden in the park is moving around, the shadows of the sculpture start to move around and dance around the sculpture, and at some point, almost reproduce exactly the shape of the sculpture itself. But when you approach this sculpture, I think in order to really read them, just keep in mind that they are done from a mathematical equation that had been expanded to a sculpture. And this mathematical equation is about traveling, it's about the ocean, and it's about a world made of exchanges and connections.